Welcome, welcome to our first Q&A session. I'm trying to think about what kind of content can I keep pumping out. And I thought a daily Q&A session. I don't know about daily. I'm just going to try a Q&A video. The goal is you guys ask whatever the hell you want. And I will answer the ones that I want. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's my GAT level? GAT level skibbity. No cap. That's right. Do I play any sports? Right now? Not really. I used to play a lot of basketball, hockey, soccer, volleyball, football, all of that shit back in like high school. Right now? Not really. My favorite anime right now? Beyblade. I honestly don't know. It's like favorite anime changes from time to time. I, I'm like, I can't really think of any on the spot right now. I'm really enjoying Tower of God. I really like, I, I, like, low-key, like, Beyblade, I know, is a cartoon, but the children's anime, it, it's pretty, pretty fun. I think a memorable anime, Eminence in Shadow is really good, right? But, like, these are kind of recency bias. I'd have to really sit down and think about it. I don't know if I have a favorite anime, but I'm thinking, like, tiers of different anime. My skincare routine? Uh, it's as simple as this. In the mornings, you, uh, cleanse with water. You don't need a cleanser. That's too harsh. Natural oils in your face is decent, so you just wash with water. Then you put a layer of, uh, I, I put, some people use toners. I have this like um, snail, like snail mucin shit from COSRX. That acts like as the base. And then it's just simple moisturizer with sunscreen. And then at nighttime, you wash that shit off with an oil cleanser. You double cleanse with an actual cleanser. Then it's the same routine, except no sunscreen. And instead, I put on... A uh, retinoid, which is like prescrip uh, prescription uh, drug that helps with um, acne and care like that. I had shitty acne back in the day. Really, really bad acne. So in order to deal with that, I got an Accutane. And then after Accutane was over, everything was good. And then the acne started to come back a little. And then we decided to settle on a topical maintenance cream, which is the retinoid. How long before it devolves into Show X? I have no idea what you're talking about. My favorite main character? Uh, right now? I don't know. You need to give me an anime. I don't know. I don't fucking know. You're putting me on the fucking spot. Was there an anime that made me cry? Oshinoku episode 1? Jujutsu Kaisen uh, Shibuya incident with a certain character? No spoilers. My least favorite anime of all time and why? I can't- I don't have of all time right now. Off the bat. These are fucking things that you really have to sit down and fucking think about. Stop giving me fucking absolutes. You could ask, like, what's what, one of the anime you hate, but, uh, fucking Giji Harum. Fuck Giji Harum. Favorite movie? Like, non-anime movie? The Dark Knight's an amazing movie. The Dune series is an amazing movie. Unpopular opinion that I'll stand by? I think that rom-com is made for a group of losers, marketed to a group of losers, created by losers, to pander to those losers, to give them a delusional fantasy about what romance with the woman will be like. But by doing that, by consuming this loser content, they're, they get deluded in how society actually works, how girls should actually be treated. They think of them as fucking anime characters, the waifus to win over than an actual person. And I think most rom-coms are fucking dog shit garbage. Yep, I stand by that 100%. This shit is actually marketed towards like actual fucking basement dwelling losers with no career, no personality, no social skills. You got nothing going on for them. Yet a waifu always exists to, you know, for whatever reason, they exist to fucking focus on the main character and get them out of their fucking depression or whatnot. It, it, it's, a, it's a power fantasy for those losers. I stand by that shit 100%. Doesn't mean every rom-com is like that, but a lot of rom-coms are like that. Best romance or rom-com anime that I've ever had to watch? Uh, Kaguya-sama. Tomo-chan is a girl. I genuinely love Tomo-chan is a girl. Tomo-chan is a girl, season one, it's all you need. You wrapped up the entire fucking arc. And I understand that other rom-com series is much longer. You can't wrap the whole romance in one season. That's totally fine. But what Tomo-chan delivered in one season was so impactful, I love that shit. Kaguya-sama is obviously goaded. Dangers in my heart, I'm starting to see. I'm starting to see how good Dangers in my heart could actually be. Yamada is hard carrying, to be honest, but we're still in the early game. Snafu was amazing in season one and season two. 
But then season three was a fucking shit show because like everyone knew how this was going to end. And I'm just watching 13 episodes of just depression for no fucking reason. Just get it over. Rip the bandaid off. What influence? Did anyone influence me or push me to do YouTube? Uh, no one specifically influenced me, but society influenced me. Every day, I was forced to work hard, study hard, get to a good college, get a good job, so you can live a successful life. And I checked off most of these checkboxes. And as soon as I got a big boy job, you know what I thought to myself? Holy shit. What am I doing right now every day spending my 9 to 5 making as much as money as a dumb kid playing fucking Fortnite that he makes my annual salary in a fucking month? What am I doing with my life? So out of desperation, because everything is getting so fucking expensive, I decided to do content creation. I try to monetize the skills that I'm actually good at while having fun. Why did I decide to stack the tire of cans? I stole a shitload of bubblies from work. You see those bubblies? That can right there? Tower of Cans, those are free perks that I had at my old job. And every day, instead of drinking them at work, I just stock them in my bag and I take them home. And then I got tired of... I could take it to the recycling downstairs, but there's a small hole. You got to insert can by can. You can't just dump the entire shit in. So I got fed up with that bullshit and I got lazy with it. And then one day I decided I need some extra color, some prop in my room because my apartment's still fucking empty. So I just have to stack the can of towers. That's it. Kaguya, QQ, and Isako are good in my opinion. I've only seen Kaguya. Any advice for people who are afraid of getting jobs due to their social anxiety? <laughs> you know what's more scarier than social anxiety? Being broke and not being able to afford bills and being homeless. If social anxiety is preventing you from getting a job, I'm sorry. You must be living such a privileged and comfortable life by living with your parents. You don't know true terror until you're on your own and you have to worry about whether or not you can pay next rent, whether or not you have to skip food to pay rent. When you're in that sink or swim situation, I guarantee you social anxiety will not even fucking exist because you're focused on survival mode. When do I watch next anime movie? Uh, I'm not sure right now. So anime movies are scheduled on Tuesdays, right? Because Tuesdays are the quote-unquote break days for Sir Gregor because I can't have him just like editing five videos a day every day. He gets burnt out. Tuesdays, he only does two videos. That's the current workflow right now. So on those days when there's less deliverables, I thought that maybe we could do some movie nights. But those movie nights were happening when my YouTube analytics has stabilized, right? That was during the tail end the final stretch of the of the last Zenkai boost of the algorithm where everything was stabilized and I didn't have to sweat it so hard to maintain a certain level of viewership. So I felt comfortable to fuck around and do that. Right now, it's different. Right now, we got a new Zenkai boost. So like, I need to be extremely fucking diligent to make sure that this viewership is stabilized. And I cannot fuck around on Tuesdays anymore by watching movies. That's why I'm pumping out so many different types of content that's not edited anime reaction content. So there's no plans for anime movies right now. When you were a kid, your father taught you how to swim by dropping you in the middle of a lake? <laughs> well, you know, natural selection, right? Birds, mothers, what will mama birds do? They'll push their children out of the nest to see if they'll fly or not. And if you can't fly, then you're just not fit for survival. Good fucking luck. It's rough. Now, I, I, you probably shouldn't have to live like that, right? But, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Some people handle stress differently, right? When you're forced to come up with some level of stress, like, some people will fold. Other people will rise to meet the expectations. My favorite anime genre that I enjoy? I'm a big Battle Shonen fan. Battle Shonen, Isekai, that's right up my alley. I actually don't really enjoy Echi as much as you think. I actually... Echi, I think, has a place, but most of the times it just kind of ruins the immersion. It's just like unnecessary fan service, which is like, all right, you're just titties. Titties is not fun content, but I get it. Sex sells. Do I play gacha games? Honkai Star Rail. Genshin Impact, I dropped, actually. Wuthering Waves. Epic 7. Play those right now. Your parents threw you into the deep end of the pool? Good. And you survived. What anime that makes me care more about the side characters than the main character? Pretty much every anime. 
if you watch anime anime reactions that I do, I most like mo I, there's never been a time where the main character of an anime has been my favorite character. Like, I usually I'm indifferent about the main characters because they're just a vessel, right? They're the vessel of the show to develop and it's it's I don't know. I just feel like a main character is boring to me, anyways. Because it's just like, yeah, you know, they got their goals and they had their different motivations and power and whatnot. I just always find side characters so much more interesting and mysterious, right? Hope my channel blows up soon. You think I'm a good reactor? Funny, but I also pay attention. Thank you so much, Falcon. Honestly, you may think that my channel is not blowing up because you see the average viewership on YouTube. Right now, we might be averaging anywhere between one to 2,000 videos per video. But if you go on Social Blade and you look at my monthly viewership, like we're we're crossing over one mil per month now without relying on shorts. These are all long form content. My monthly viewership is extremely competitive. The channel is low key blowing up right now. Like we're doing way better than a lot of different channels that have like hundred thousand of subs. You'd be surprised. Never gauge a channel success based on uh, individual video performance or sub count. Go look at their monthly viewership on Social Blade. It's simple public data. Have I tried dyeing my hair different colors? Yeah, back in the day. Auburn brown, I think, was the meta. But uh, I prefer the current gray hair. It just works. Don't want to switch it up. I'll just keep, I'll just stick to what this is. Gonna go for another appointment on Tuesday, actually. So on Tuesday night, you'll see me all freshed up. I got 1k subs in a week. Well, it's a little bit biased right now. All right, it, it's very biased right now. Also, this is a Q&A session for anyone tuning in, in right now. Q and Q&A sesh ask questions. I'll pin this. I'll show you the uh I will show you the uh what's it called? The stats right now and why my ch why it seems like my fucking you know, why it seems like I got over 1,000 subs in a month. So, here is the... Let me just show you, switch up to this view here. So, let's look at what's going on. Alright? So, this is the chart for viewership over the last lifetime. And I've already shown you a breakdown of what goes on, right? Every time I've been focused and filmed a community, every three months or so, YouTube lifts the floodgates, and that's what I call a Zenkai boost. And if I'm able to maintain that viewership for the next three months, I've gotten a Zenkai boost. This is one, two, three, four. I think this is the fifth iteration right now. And anytime shit like this happens, you'll notice that the audience as well, it spikes like that, right? This correlates. What does it say? New viewers are tuning in as soon as we got the new Zenkai boost. And what's interesting with these charts is that anytime you get a new boost, obviously there's going to be a lot of subs coming in. But this sub count, you'll notice that the sub count is never um, increasing and increasing, increasing cascadingly, right? Like if you look at the viewership, right, it just keeps increasing and doesn't go down. But if you think about a, sub a subscriber base, right, eventually you're going to tap out of the new audience that's like sub to you. So even and, and you and you and the average audience, you know, a returning audience will increase. But like sub count, there's a limited amount of people that you've been exposed to and they'll sub and all of them are subbing in the beginning of, you know, the last two weeks or so when we blew up. But like, obviously it's going to go down. So it's going to come down a little bit more right now, but it's pretty good. Right now we're averaging like 2K a month right now, I think, per sub count. I really think that if we can maintain this trajectory throughout the next three months or so, and then we go into fall 2024 strong with ReZero carrying, I think 30k by the end of this year is quite possible, and I'm hoping to try to get to 2 million views per month. It's going to be difficult. It's probably more likely going to be between 1.5 mil to 1.8 mil by the end of this month, but that's a very respectable number for a channel our size. Would I ever do a subathon? So here's the thing about subathons. For any other channel where they just play games silently, they don't have to be on camera, it's easy to do a subathon, right? But when I do reactions, I try to really give a fuck. I want to give every episode the reaction it deserves. I really want to give a fucking try. But when I do a subathon, I'm gonna be tired, I'm gonna be lazy, and the reactions will be extremely mid. So reaction content and subathons are not a good pair at all. I need to be fresh, and I need to be on point, right? 
of course, I could stream longer and I could try to pump out more reactions. In fact, I could stop pausing as much and I could try to make the reactions shorter for the sake of more volume. But I think that is the worst thing I could do for my channel. My channel identity and my brand identity is me fixating and doing commentating and doing in-depth analysis that a lot of other channels might not do. And if I stray away from that, that's a bad idea. I think that it's a short-sighted thing that's going to ultimately uh, be the fall of my channel if I do that. Every episode, I'm going to take its time and give it what it needs. What's my percentage of views coming from subscribers versus not subscribed? It's about like 60-40 split right now from not subscribed to subscribed. Contrary to what people say at the beginning of YouTube videos, right? A lot of people say, hey... And they'll show you a screenshot, right? They'll say 90% of the viewers are, you know, not subs. Only 10% are subs. So I'd appreciate it if you like and sub to this video. A lot of people have that YouTube intro. That's actually a fantastic problem to have. A really bad problem to have is when you have more subs than not subs watching. Because that means you can't even go to the new audience. You're wrapped up in this small bubble and you can't get anywhere else. That's a terrible thing to happen. Eventually... That circle of viewers is going to shrink and shrink. That's why it's important not only to make content that your community likes, but experiment and try different things for trends to tap into a different audience. But right now for me, it's about 60-40. My favorite type of smoothie? I don't know. This smoothie is just like a culmination of fucking frozen fruits and vegetables and protein powder and a bunch of other healthy shit that I would never fucking eat on my own. I just blend this shit and gargle it. Have I checked Anime Honest Review by Lunar Equinox? No, I haven't. But if you want me to watch that shit, go to the fucking Discord and link it in the stream reaction request channel. My pauses are good. I think that pausing is dangerous. A lot of people are actually upset about me pausing, but I think even more people are happy that I pause, right? I think a lot of people are used to big reaction channels that are just glancing over the enemy without pausing and just talking over it. In fact, that's how I used to do it too. But with the way that I analyze and the way that I talk about anime, I think pausing to give my takes is the superior format for me. It's a much more engaging audience, uh, engaging experience. It also creates more watch time for the YouTube videos to get more money out of it. Longer videos, the longer people watch, the happier YouTube is. That formula works fine for me. But just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone else. If you pause for the sake of pausing and don't give anything impactful, if the commentary is extremely forced or it feels like you're just pausing for the sake of pausing then people will skip over that content and no one even watch it you don't want that shit happening either i know that uh, you don't really don't like opening reaction what's the reason views what's the reason why i'm doing opening reactions it is simple views i think opening reactions is the most extreme bottom of the barrel just uninspiring content but people like it when i just sit there and bop my head and just say wow this part's amazing. Oh my god. Honestly, during the opening reactions, I like it when I like actually pause to like analyze different frames. Tensura Season 3 Part 2 opening reaction. I think a lot of people appreciated that. But that's not really an opening music reaction. That's more like an opening analysis, you know? I don't know. I'm not Nicholas Light, you know? I can't just be on point and fucking deliver the opening reaction that those people like. But I'll sit there and just fucking bop my head and farm those views. I mean, this shit got 37 fucking thousand views for no fucking reason, right? No Nokotan opening as well. I think that opening reactions are extremely just cringe for me, but I force myself to do it because it still gets the views sometimes. Do I have plans for gaming content? So the gaming content was something that I was trying to incorporate at the beginning of June when I try to go full time with content creation. And with the new time that I found, instead of working a 9 to 5, I was wondering what I could do. But I've kind of figured out that it's I should probably focus more on just the YouTube reaction side, right? Just pumping out more reaction commentary regarding like anime news. Uh, just any news around the anime industry, maybe even VTuber stuff, gacha games. I feel like um, that's just free content that I'm not tapping into right now. And you know Asmongold, right? Of course everybody knows Asmongold. I look at, I'm basically just, like think of me as Asmongold, but just for anime shit. That's the way that I want to kind of take my channel. Of course the anime reactions are the focus, but to supplement that shit, with um, commentary about ver various news on anime stuff, I think is the direction that I want to take it. The um, 
doesn't mean that gaming is done. I'm trying to figure, I, I still have, I'm, I'm not going to give up on gaming. I'm still going to do it. It's just right now again, because this is the beginning of the Zenkai boost. I am locked in for the next month, for the next however long it takes to stabilize. It's just like really scary right now. I'll show you the analytics one more time. I'll show you the analytics one more time. It's just a bit scary right now. Because like, if you look at actually, views aren't the only metric. I think another really important metric is uh, watch time. But uh, I don't know. I, f I feel like during, if you can like zoom in on this, right? The beginning of every Zenkai boost, we're always going to hit a higher number than expected, right? And at the peak of the Zenkai boost, I think that we hit for like what? 53,000 on that day, Friday, July 5th. I think that's when Roche that aired, Nokutan trailers are dropping, opening reactions are fucking dropping. There was a lot of good things happening. Tower of God, you know, Rachel pushing bomb, stuff like that. I, I min-maxed the fuck out of this Zenkai booth. Once I saw everything popping off, I was like, I am going to upload all the good shit right now that I know will get a shitload of views in order to try to like ride the momentum as high as possible. But unfortunately, and, and that is a good thing, but... The problem is, if you don't know how to maintain expectations, if you don't know, if you can't realize that, listen, the 100k viewership per last 48 hours, right? That was fucking amazing. But the real baseline is more closer to 80,000, 85,000, right? And if you can't understand that, then you're going to get depressed and think, oh my god, the algorithm dropped me, right? So the new baseline right now is about that 80 to 90k um, viewership. I think that's where we're stabilizing right now, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And if we can just maintain that moving forward, it's fine. But um, I need to just focus on stabilizing this, understanding what the new baseline is, and then we can try to go back to the other shit. After SAO, uh, you prefer 12 series or less? Yeah. So here's a problem with the, here's a so a good problem a good pro a good thing to have is like for example. SEO reactions are great because they perform well, the community loves it, and it's long. The more oil you have, obviously the better it is to farm that oil. But a problem is, every month we're growing fast. We're getting new people coming in. And those people didn't vote for SAO. So suddenly, the show that got voted in that you thought was the biggest oil farm could, end, could actually be bad because the new people coming in doesn't resonate with that content, right? So sometimes it is better to have fast... 12 episode, 24 episode seasons where you can get the new people coming in, you know, vote on the shows, fucking poll and stuff like that, right? That's, that's like a very important thing to do. Was there a country I visited and wanted to live there? I don't really travel. The last place I went to was probably like Costa Rica during my college days to build like a library, but I was sleeping on the fucking floor getting eaten out by mosquitoes. I'm pleasantly fine here. Canada low-key sucks. If content creation does better, I'd like to move to the States where I can avoid the fucking tax. Sometimes I talk about mixed audience. From an analysis point, what do I think about GOT game strategy having music reactions, game anime on the same channel? So it works in his case because he started off with music reactions and then incorporated anime reactions, right? And while he does really well, I think that he could do even better if he focused his niche even more. And that's an interesting thing with my channel right now, too. It's like, it, I am kind of like overlapping and bringing a lot of audience by doing so much different commentary and different topics rather than sticking to anime. But I am carefully looking at the analytics and realizing that these aren't completely random people and the existing audience does love it. So I think that being focused in one specific niche is good. But if different types of content does work for you, then... There's no problem doing it. You don't have to just stick to one thing. GOT Games understands the different um, subgroups that he has in his channel and delivers the content that they want, and that's why he does so well. Monogatari? Well, Monogatari's gotta get voted in, or else it's never gonna win. Do I really hate watching animes that are melodramatic and depressing? Yes. I don't think Charlotte is melodramatic or depressing. I think Charlotte's very fun. I think it's very good anime. I think Snafu Season 3 is melodramatic and depressing. I do not... Like, depressing doesn't mean bad, but if it's just like sob story melodramatic shit, it's fucking boring. Like, Senpai is no Toko no Ko, I could just feel that it's going to that direction. I don't want to deal with that shit. 
I'm not fucking watching anime to be sad. I'm not watching anime to feel depressed. Life is already fucking depressing. I'm watching anime to have some fun. But there's these freaks that fucking watch anime just so that they can cry, so that I can feel something. I'm sorry, bro. I'm not that person. Yes, Natsuka pisses me off. Fuck Natsuka. If a sad at listen, whatever wins the poll, I'll react. That's the only thing that matters. My enjoyment to a series does not matter. It's what the audience wants. I am simply a servant acting on your guys' behalf. A lot of people have a wrong understanding of how YouTube works. They think that, oh, you're so base for only making videos that you like. No, that's fucking stupid and it's retarded. Any plans for a community meme review? Uh, I was thinking about opening up a Reddit, just like how Asmongold does, so that you guys can post that shit there and I can react to it, right? That's kind of what the Discord is, though, right? I have a channel where I post that shit and you guys make links me, but, like, uh, that, those are for video requests. Maybe we could do, like, a uh, meme kind of stuff, but I'm not too sure. Anyone else? There's 132 monkeys in here. And only three people are asking over and over. Why did I choose the name Kaka? I explained that before, and I think I'm going to save that as a secret. Well, seeing as there's 132 lurkers, I will end this Q&A session for now. Thanks for tuning in. Maybe we can do another one of these, depending on the performance. Goodbye.